Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now today we're going to be taking a look at PFSense, that's a firewall system, a router, uh, intrusion detection, VPN. It's absolutely a great open source software that you can install on just about any kind of PC that has two Ethernet port specifically, I'm going to be using the Odyssey Blue from Seed Studios. We're going to be looking at how you install it. We're going to see where PFSense sits in your overall network. And of course, we're going to answer the question, why? Why would you want to install it? So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So before we look at why you'd want to install PFSense, just let me remind you that you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains, and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go to GaryExplains.com, type in your address, no spam, but you will get the email. Now, why would you want to install PFSense? Well, probably your internet connection at home goes something like this. You've got an internet service provider, they've given you a device, which is a kind of a router, maybe a modem, and also a Wi-Fi access point, and then you've got the rest of your network connected to that. Now, the great thing about those free devices that you get from your internet service provider is that they are free. That's the great thing. You sign up, you pay your monthly fee, and you get this thing for free. Now, in my case here, for example, I've got ADSL, so my unit acts as a modem, acts as a router, and it acts as a, uh, a Wi-Fi hotspot. But here's the point. It's never had a firmware update, ever. Ever. In the years that I've had it, it's never been updated once. So that does raise a question about its security. Are there vulnerabilities in it that are just not even being looked at, they're not being updated? Also because it is the lowest end kind of device they can kind of get to because they're giving it to you for free, it often isn't very fast. And of course, it doesn't have very many features. Can I install intrusion detection system on it? Of course not. Does it have VPN built into it? Of course not. And so on and so on. Now, what you can do is you can take a PC with two Ethernet ports and you can install PFSense on it and it can either replace that router depending exactly on how your internet service provider brings internet into your building or it can supplement it. In other words, it becomes the first device on your network and acts therefore as the firewall it, using the device, because I have to use my one because it's a modem, and then it goes into my PFSense unit. And then once you've got that PFSense there on your network, you can do a whole bunch of things. Obviously, it's a firewall, but you've got intrusion detection systems. You can do a lot with the addressing, the DHCP stuff. You can you know, install a VPN, so all your traffic goes over a VPN, and so on and so on. There's very many feature-rich, but in its basic setup, once you get it running, you are protected just by using uh, PFSense. Now, as I said, I'm going to install this on Odyssey Blue, and the great thing about the Odyssey Blue is it's got two gigabit Ethernet ports. That means I can have one port that connects to the internet side, so it connects to my free uh, modem router that I got from my internet service provider, and it's the only thing. There's one wire that goes from my modem into that, so there's nothing else on that side of the network. So the first thing that meets the, the, the internet traffic meets on, on my side is that PFSense unit. Then there's a second ethernet port which then connects to the rest of your network. So to get this up and running, what you're gonna need is a PC with two ethernet ports like the Odyssey Blue from Seed Studios. You're going to need probably some kind of switch because there's only got one port coming out of your out of the, the PFSense unit, out of the Odyssey Blue, and then that then goes into a switch which you can then distribute things around your house. You're probably gonna need some kind of Wi-Fi access point which will also connect into that switch. I've got reviews here of several different Wi-Fi access points here on this channel, including also looking at mesh networking if that kind of thing interests you. And you're gonna need a flash drive. You're gonna need a flash drive because that's how you install the OS. Now, if you've done any kind of OS installations before, whether that's Windows or Linux, even on a Raspberry Pi, uh, any of those kind of things, this is very similar. You copy the OS onto a flash drive, you boot off the flash drive, it goes through an installation process, and that's it. It's up and running on the device. Okay, let's crack on. Okay, so to install PFSense, you're going to need a USB flash drive and a piece of software to copy the image that we download, the OS image for PFSense onto that flash drive. Now I'm gonna recommend you use a Belena Etcher. There are several varieties of programs that you can do. Even the Raspberry Pi Imager will probably do this. Rufus will also do it as well. Belena Etcher is available for Windows, Mac OS, and for Linux, so it works really, really well. And uh, you just download it and then just do the normal install and you'll have it on your PC. 
Now to download PFSense, you go over to pfsense.org slash download, and here you get the choice of what you're gonna download. So let's start by picking the architecture. We want 64-bit, it says AMD 64, that's also Intel 64-bit without a problem there. And then what installer do we want? Well, we want a USB flash drive, as I said. Now, how do you want to be able to interact with this? The console, do you wanna do it over a serial port? Probably not, you can do it, of course, but the easiest way, of course, is just to use VGA, that's the graphics card that you're going to have connected up, of course, to the Odyssey Blue there. VGA doesn't necessarily mean a VGA port, of course it will work over HDMI without any problem whatsoever. And then pick where you are. Well, I'm in, in Europe, so I'm gonna pick uh, Frankfurt, Germany, and then you hit the download button and it will start to download. Okay, that's now downloaded, so I need to start up uh, Belena Etcher. So here is Belena Etcher, it's a three step process. You choose the file you want to flash, you choose the target, and then you hit the button to actually do the flashing. So first of all, let's pick that file we just downloaded. So there you can see it's the PFSense memstick image that we downloaded. Now we select the target. Now I've got a 16 gigabyte uh, Toshiba, here it is, drive in there. So we'll just select that. And then we just hit flash and it will go away and start doing it. Okay, so the first step is to insert the USB flash drive into the Odyssey Blue and then power it on. When we power it on, we need to press F7 uh, repeatedly until we get the boot menu. So here we have the boot menu. I've already got, for example, uh, Windows on here. I've also got Ubuntu on here. So what we do is we go down and just boot from the first partition of uh, that Toshiba flash drive. And here we can see PFSense coming up. There we go. What do we want to do? Well, it gives us, it just goes into its default boot there. That will boot up as we wait now for the initial setup uh, menu to come up. Okay, so we accept the uh, license and the trademark agreements. What do we want to do and what to install? So we just click on OK. Uh, the default key mapping is OK for me at the moment. Uh, guided root ZFS, that's absolutely fine by me. Now, uh, it's gonna say proceed with the installation. So let's just click on there. Now we don't want uh, any redundancy because I've only got the one drive that I want to install it on. If you had multiple drives, you could set them up in different ways. Now, where do I want to install it? Well, I've got the 128 gigabyte one that's got Windows on it. That's obviously the drive we just booted from and I'm gonna build install this on the uh, NVMe drive, which is that one there. So we press space to select it and then hit enter again. You're gonna lose everything on there. Yes, I know that. So move over to yes, hit enter again. And that's now gonna go ahead and start installing that. The installation is now finished. Before exiting the installer, would you like to open up a shell in the new system to make any final manual modifications? No, I would not want to do that. Do we want to reboot? Yes. Now that it's finished booting, let's just look here above the menu. You can notice that it says WAN and LAN. And so it's important on the Odyssey Blue that you plug your LAN, that's the other devices in your house in the left-hand port as you're looking at it from the back, and you plug the WAN into the right-hand port. And it's told me that it's got a, an address automatically for the, uh, for the WAN, uh, on my uh, talking to my router, talking to my router that comes from my internet service provider, and it's given it 192.168.1.239. Now on the LAN side, that's the side where I'll be able to access my devices and be able to access the web interface. It's got the address of 192.168.1.1, which is often the address that uh, routers uh, and uh, gateways uh, have. So now we should be able to go over to a device connected to the LAN side, and actually enter into the web interface. Okay, so here I'm on a computer connected to the LAN side of the Odyssey Blue of PFSense, and I'm going to go to that address 192.168.1.1, its address on this network. And here I get through to PFSense. Now it's not a secure connection, there's no SSL certificate. If you get an error in your browser telling you that you shouldn't proceed, you can proceed quite safely through to this interface. The uh, type in the username, admin and pfsense, all lowercase. Welcome to pfsense. So we've now got to go through and uh, go through the setup wizard. So let's just do that. We click next. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, pfsense is fine. You can leave the domain as fine. We can set the um, Google for our primary 
uh, DNS servers. Okay, and then we don't allow them to be overridden. That's uh, your choice there. Well, well, I'm gonna use their time server. I'm gonna set my time zone here in Europe like that. Okay, so we're now configuring the WAN. So that's the internet side of things. How do you want it to get its address? Getting it through DHCP is absolutely fine because it's then gonna to talk to uh, my router. And if you, you can, if you're talking directly to some kind of connection from your internet service provider, you're removing your router completely, you might wanna type in these uh, PPPOE username and passwords or the PPTP username and passwords. This is information that you would get from your uh, from your ISP. And if you're if you're getting if you're using a router from your ISP, you want to make sure you don't block private networks from entering uh, via WAN. Okay, and also we want to set the uh, IP address. Now I'm gonna actually change it here because 192.168.1.1 is confusing because also if you notice the WAN side was 192.168.1. something. So if we just make this quite distinct, let's make it 11.1 and that will give us just a different, so we can very clearly tell the difference between WAN and, and LAN. And uh, we'll set the uh, admin uh, password so that we're not relying on the default one. Okay, let's hit reload that. Okay, so that's reconfigured it. Now, we've just moved the router from the PFSense router from 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.11.1. So we need to access that now, but our this PC that I've got on the LAN side has still got its old address. So we want to start up the command prompt and fix that. So let's go over to the command prompt. And what we wanna do is type IP config slash release and then ip config slash renew and that will try to get a new ip address from uh, the pf sense and as you can see now it has it's got 192.11.10 so that's now in the correct uh, ip address range and now we can go back up here to our uh, to our web browser and we can change this now to uh, 11.1 and we can, yeah, oh, there's that error mess I talked about earlier. If you do get that, proceed, it's okay. And now we can log in as admin, but with the new password that I set, not the default one. And uh, that's it. Here we are running PFSense. So your network is now protected with firewall and a router. And uh, we can see here the two addresses here in the interface, 192.168.1.239. It's got that from my router connecting it to the internet and 192.168.11.1 is the name of this server and all the devices are it that will be connected via the LAN connection will be in 192.168.11.x. Now here's the main dashboard. We can just add in a few interesting things here. Uh, let's, for example, add in some interface statistics. So that will get that comes, this is a dashboard. So you can add basically new things. Here we go. So it's talking about what's going through the LAN, what's going through the WAN. You can see here, that what this is information about the system. We can see this is the Odyssey Blue with the J4125 uh, and all this information here, load, temperature, all this kind of gr great stuff. What else can we add here that would be uh, interesting? NTP status, why not? Always like a bit of time. I've got some videos here about time here on this channel. So that will be interesting, there we go. So there we go, it's uh, just synced up that fine there like that. So uh, we can basically play around with all the different things that you can do. And obviously PFSense is uh, a very, very big and powerful piece of software, but also simple in the sense that it's now up and running and you didn't have to do anything. Now, one thing we might want to look for though here is the DHCP server. And that tells us the things that are gonna be served on the LAN side. So if you remember that's 192.168.11. Dot zero. And what it's basically saying here is that the first address is dot 10 and the last address is dot 245, which is why this PC that I'm using to configure it got the address of 
11.10, you can change that here. So if I wanted to uh, have a permanent IP address for a machine or a server on my network, and I don't want to configure it inside the OS of that machine, so inside Windows, inside Linux, if it's a Synology, for example, inside of their web interface, I want to control it here within PFSense, what you do is you go up to status, you go up to DHCP leases, which will show you the devices that are already connected on your network. In this case, I've just got the one device, which is the one that I'm using to configure it. You can hit plus here, and now I can actually type in an IP address. Now it needs to be an IP address that is uh, outside of the current DHCP range. So R1 stopped at 245. So I'm gonna give this one the permanent address of 250. And then you can scroll down here uh, to save like that. So the static mapping has been changed. The changes must be applied for them to take effect. Apply changes. Changes have been applied successfully. Now, if we go back down to our command line, as we did earlier, if we type in uh, IP config, we can see that this has still got the old address because of course the PC didn't know that we've changed things. So we just do IP config release, IP config uh, renew, and it will go and ask PFSense for its new address and it will give it that fixed one. And how does it know what to give it? Because it's based on the MAC address. So each uh, network card has got a fixed MAC address and that MAC address is identified to the PFSense uh, software and he goes oh I know who this is uh, I'll give it this fixed uh, IP address and there you can go it's done it 192.168.11.250 so there's lots you can do here with PFSense but by doing this now my network is now secure with by default uh, with the router and the firewall and it's it's configured out of the box to be secure as it should be and then you can start playing with it and configuring it uh, and there's lots obviously that you can do so there you go PFSense running very very nicely on an Odyssey Blue Mini PC Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then subscribe to the channel so you'll always know when I've released a new video. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.